Hey guys, it's Dan and Tom here from the Table Tennis Daily Academy.com. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at 10 mistakes table tennis players make. Yeah, that's right. Now, whether you're a beginner or an advanced level player, there's no doubt you will have fallen into one of these mistakes from time to time. So we're going to run through what they are and how you can avoid them. Let's get into it. Okay, mistake number one is recovery. Now, many players break down in the point or are not consistent enough simply by not recovering well. Now, what I mean by this is some players have really big swings. They might play a good shot. But if the person blocks it back, they're struggling to get back in position. It's really important to have that neutral position after each stroke. So, for example, when you play a good topspin, you want to have your bat out in front and high. A lot of players might play a shot and drop the bat low. Again, it's hard to recover. So players are simply missing the ball because they're not recovering well in time. Let's take a look. Nice. Now, because I kept my strokes there compact, I was recovering and keeping my bat in front, I was able to be consistent with my stroke play. What's really important is building this recovery into your shot. So always getting used to playing your shot and then coming back to a nice neutral position. You'll be ready for both a backhand and a forehand, and that will really improve your consistency. Mistake number two is overforcing and trying to win the point too quickly. Quite often we see players go for that killer shot or a really aggressive topspin, but break down and make a lot of mistakes. Now what's important is to not give the opponent too many unforced errors, often being solid, consistent, and working with more placement in your shots can cut out mistakes and make you a much more difficult to beat player. We see this a lot, players break down early, just trying to go too hard in the beginning. So you get a weak ball, you try and hit it too hard, too aggressive, you will make a lot of mistakes like this. Now, what you'll find is sometimes you do get these shots on, but they will never be consistent if you're playing without control. So what we want to do is look to play with more spin, keep that ball on the table until we have an easier chance to finish the point. You know, if you play a really hard shot right into my bat, even if it's a very good shot, I can block it back. Whereas if you play a slower shot with less quality but better placement, that's a much more effective shot because the opponent might return it back, but it'd be weak return, and then you can finish it after. So trying to create the point is really, really key. Okay, and the third mistake links to the previous one, and that is hitting the ball far too flat and not enough spin and quality. If you hit the ball too flat, your shots go very direct. They will go on sometimes, and it will look really impressive if you get it right, but the consistency is not high enough. Now, if you produce lots of spin on the ball, the ball goes up and it arcs over on the table and dips down. If you hit too flat, it goes in a very straight line. That's exactly right. We're looking to develop a nice, relaxed brushing contact, really trying to listen out for that sound. So you don't want a hard, flat sound. We want that nice, quiet brushing sound with a soft contact. Work on getting that spin and control and safety in all your strokes. Okay, so let's take a look. If I find top spin with spin, and get nice quality, stay nice and relaxed. Each time I'm trying to get that sound, like good spin and brushing contact. Okay, now if I hit the ball flatter with my topspin strokes, let's see what happens. So again, it's very high risk. The difference is with the spin, you get the safety, and the flat ball, very difficult. You don't get that arc. As I said, some can go on, but it's very hit or miss. You wanna try and develop those strokes with good spin, good brush, and good contact. So if you do want to produce more spin there and improve the safety on your shots, like Dan said, we want to look to have a nice relaxed grip, not too tense and hard in the contact. We're looking to have a smooth, relaxed action and really trying to brush across that ball with a slightly closed bat angle and then looking to really get that brush and spin across, getting that kick on the other side of the table, which in turn gives you a lot of safety and quality on your shots. Now, mistake number four is footwork and getting stuck with your feet and planted. Quite often we see players move into position and then the ball changes placement and they're completely stuck. So often you need to make those small adjustments. So once you've made your move, you still might need to make a little skip or a little slight change of your footwork. Often players get stuck and they're static with their feet and very flat footed. It's really important to try and be on the balls of your feet, be flexible, be able to dynamically shift your body around. If you're very heavy, very stuck, then you're gonna find it very difficult when the ball placement changes. So try and be on the balls of your feet, ready to make those small changes and get into position. Okay, so now the fifth mistake, and I'm sure many players can relate to this, is being too upright. Now the problem with being upright is that you end up just having your arm into the shots. It's very hard to use your weight transfer. You want your weight going forward in your strokes. If you come upright, you lose control, the ball can often shoot out. If you do get it on, it's then very hard to then recover, which links back to the first mistake. So yeah, keeping your weight forward is key. It's also really important when you're receiving serve as well. So if you're upright when you're receiving serve, you don't have control with your back to the ball. So the ball can go up high, you lose control. 
be nice and low. So when you get to the ball, your back and your head is close to the ball so you have control and feeling. If you're far away and stretching and being upright, you lose control. This is also the same when you play a stroke as well. So if I play a backhand flick, you want to come back out low and play the stroke again and not come upright. So we just have a little look. So if I play a backhand flick and stay low, it's much easier to play that next shot. Your weight's going forward into the ball. So avoid being upright. Mistake number six is pushing when the ball is actually long. Now we see this happen so many times with players when the ball is a long push or it's a serve. The ball actually will come off the end, but they push the ball back and give the initiative back to the opponent. What we want to try and do is wait to see if that ball is coming long and try and initiate with a top spin stroke. If you're stuck in a pushing rally or you're always letting that ball come long and push, it's going to be difficult. You're going to be on the back foot. So we want to really get used to looking for that top spin. And it doesn't have to be with speed. It can be a nice, slow, spinny open up but that will put the opponent under more pressure than simply pushing it back and being passive. So a great training drill for this is me serving to Dan, and I'm gonna serve a mixture of short serves where he's gotta come in and push, or half long or long serves where he's gotta to look to topspin. And by doing this, you'll get better at reading when the ball is coming off the end long and playing that topspin when you get the chance. So there it was short, he stepped in and push. This time just off the end, he read that well, managed to get it. Let's have another one. Again, long, he spins it up. That was a great example there. Dan didn't try and play that ball hard because it was just drifting long. It's very difficult to play this ball hard. So he played with brush and with spin and got that safety, but that's still much better than pushing it back. So the more you get these top spins into play, even with heavy spin rather than speed, it will put you on the front foot and stop the opponents attacking you. Now, mistake number seven is rushing during matches and also training. Now, there are a lot of players who, when they play matches, they rush into the table really quickly, serve with not much thought process and not thinking about tactics. You really want to take your time and think about your game. Exactly, and it's the same in practice. A lot of players we see, they practice and they play a lot of points and they break down quickly and they rush and they just grab the ball and start the next rally. If you're breaking down like that, try and think about slowing down, taking your time. It's all about quality, not quantity. So if you're rushing and making mistakes, you're not gonna get the most benefit out of that in your practice. And the same with matches. If you're losing a few points in a row, try not to rush and speed things up. Take your time and really think about it between each point. Think about your serve, think about return, and what tactics are working for you. Mistake number eight is miss hits and not hitting the ball cleanly in the center of the bat with a good contact. Now we often see this happen to players when they get very tense and rushed in matches and they'll quite often hit the edge of the bat or not get a correct contact and the ball can drop in the net or even too thick and it flies off the end. So let's take a look at an example. So if I'm smashing in a point and I'm very tense and rushed, it's quite likely that I'm gonna hit a miss hit and not get a clean contact. So here I'm smashing. Sometimes you'll get a good one, but then if you're rushed and you're tense, a lot of the time you'll hit this top edge or you'll just completely miss the contact and not hit the center of the bat. So we want to be nice and relaxed, taking our time with these shots, really trying to measure and hit, measure and hit, not rushing, nice relaxed arm, and then you can put the ball away. So really try and avoid these miss hits by slowing down, taking your time and keeping that nice low center of gravity and good balance. Now avoiding miss hits isn't easy. It's something you need to practice, you need to be relaxed as Tom said, and not be too tensed. I mean, take for example, the chairman from the TTD team, he gets lots of miss hits. But in fairness, Dan, it does even happen to the best players in the world. Check out this from Marlon. Great stuff for WTT Macau. Oh, oh man. We've got a donkey of the day. That was such a high love. So mistake number nine is losing the table. Now what we mean by this is when you play a shot and you drop back, your momentum falls backwards rather than going forward. When you play a shot, you want to keep your weight forward into the ball. So an example of this is if I was doing a backhand open up, and I drop back on it, and now I'm playing back from the table, I lose the positioning, Tom then has the angles. The problem is when you drop off even by a foot, the angle opens up a lot wider, you're under pressure. When you open up, you wanna try and stay at the table so you can keep the pressure. So if you move into the ball, you have a lot more control, 
and pushing forward. Yeah, and that's a great example. Now, I think quite often players will do this even just slightly without realizing. Yeah. So even when they push, they may be slightly dropping back and then getting caught reaching in. Or like Dan said, opening up, but falling back as they do it. Yeah. So it's really important to stay weight forward, nice and low on the balls of your feet. And then when you're playing a shot, you can stay forward and be ready to play that next one and follow up well, whether that's a push, a flick, or a topspin in the rally. Now, finally, mistake number 10 is not having a game plan, an identity, and a style of play. Lots of players that we coach, we speak to them, we say, okay, how do you win points? What's your strength? And they, and they find it difficult to answer. If you don't understand your own strengths and your own way of winning points, then it's very difficult to formulate a game plan. Absolutely. Now, understanding your game plan, as Tom said there, helps you know what you do well, how you can win points, but also it allows you to know what your weaknesses are. So then when you are practicing, you can work on things that are, is your weakness. For example, if you've got a poor forehand flick in a match, you know, you can then start practicing that. And you need to be aware of what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and that will then formulate your game plan. Now, great ways to do this are video analysis. So watching your training sessions and matches back, then you can start to get a better idea of what shots are winning you points and also those weaknesses. Also asking club mates and coaches where they feel your strengths are and where they feel your best shots are. So you can really start to formulate a game plan and understand how to get these strengths into play and put your opponent under pressure. Also, like Dan said, avoiding those weaknesses will make you a much more all round better player. So there we go, guys. There were 10 mistakes table tennis players make and how to avoid them. Now, if you do want more tutorials on how to improve your game, be sure to check out tabletennisdailyacademy.com for lots more. Yeah, that's right. Now, even if you've been playing the game for a long time, it's very easy to fall into one of these mistakes, so be sure to avoid them. Also, let us know in the comments below what other mistakes table tennis players often make. Now, be sure to like and subscribe for lots more. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.